Good morning and welcome to another Modern Miss Mason Chapel session. My name is Leah and this is a place where mums of all ages and stages of life can find a place of rest, inspiration and a devotional anchor for the week ahead. Today is Monday the 21st of February and I'm really glad you're here. When I was a young girl, my family and I went on holiday to Cyprus. And as part of this trip to Cyprus, we took a two or three day boat trip, like a mini cruise over to Israel. It's my first and only experience thus far of Israel. And I was quite young and we had this fantastic tour guide that took us to all the famous places around Israel, Jerusalem, Bethlehem, all the places that have uh, meaning and history and stories behind them. Now we were um, in a crowd of people and the tour guide held up a large post of some kind, I think it was bright yellow if I remember, and you could spot him in the crowd because there were tour guides everywhere. At one point during our travelling around on foot, I think we were maybe in, in Jerusalem somewhere, my sister and I, who was a couple of years younger than me, decided just to um, wander off. We weren't really young. We were probably maybe in our early teens, so tweens, teens kind of age. We both had very blonde hair in a uh, country that, um, you know, the people there didn't see that all the time amongst them. So we stood out. And we spotted some markets that looked very inviting and intriguing. And we thought we'd just take ourselves over and have a look in these markets. Now, little did we know that whilst we were wandering around in these markets alone, um, our tour guide was kind of freaking out a little bit. Our parents were, where are these girls? They were supposed to be following us. And eventually they caught up with us. We hadn't wandered too far off the beaten track. They found us, we found them. Uh, there were some words spoken and they, you know, I mean, what could go wrong? Two young blonde English girls wandering around an Israeli market on our own with no clue. I don't think we even had any money on us. Um, you know, it was it was a ridiculous situation, but they brought us back into the crowd and said, he said, you must follow me you must look and see make sure you can see me all the time I know where we're going you mustn't wander from this path I remembered that recently as I was thinking about the difference between being a fan of something or someone and a follower of someone Jesus calls us to follow him and that is not a, a case of just a an occasional wandering or when you see a sign. This is a whole life, whole body sacrificial choice to follow Jesus. And I would suggest that many Christians are fans of Jesus, fans of his work. Um, they may follow scriptural Instagram accounts or they may occasionally read Christian books or even flick up on the Bible from time to time because they like it and that is really the behavior of a fan is kind of saying wow this is amazing look at this incredible but there's a significant distance between a person who is a fan and a person who is a follower who is invited in to the life of that person Let's jump in really quickly here to our scripture today. And I want to look at Mark chapter 1, verse 16 to 20. I'm going to read a few more verses than we normally read in our chapel sessions. But the context is important. This is when Jesus was first calling the disciples. And I read from verse 16. And he said this. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them 
and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. There is a big difference, isn't there, between being a fan and a follower. The word follower, the term is very prevalent in our 21st century technological uh, communities and society that we're a part of. We follow people on Instagram. We uh, are friends and followers of people on Facebook, obviously over here on YouTube. We subscribe, but really it's a form of following. But it's not, is it? It's it's kind of been a fan. We we do this with a distance. It may feel like we're invited into someone's life when they show us these great video clips or stories on Instagram, where we're seeing the insides, um, the insides of their home or the behaviours of their of their lives and their rhythms and, and routines. But we don't really know who they are as people. We choose to show what we want to show on social media. We are a fan of what we see. You know, if you like a, um, a music group or an, even an author, we can be a fan of their work, but to fully follow them and what they do, we have to see the inner workings of their lives. It's a very, very different thing. There, is a, 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 there are barriers and there's a separation between a fan and the person that they are admiring, whereas a follower walks in the footsteps. A follower has to move. There is a, um, a call to movement. A, a fan can just stand, st stand uh, still and can watch from a distance, can read something and put it down. Whereas to, to actually follow means movement. We actually have to make progress. And this is challenging, isn't it, with our walk with Jesus, because so many people, we can read the Bible, we can follow accounts on Instagram and, and watch big churches around the world on, on YouTube. We can read great books and quote great quotes. But are we moving forward in our relationship with God? It's very challenging. If I am a follower, then I will be moving. Otherwise, maybe I'm just a fan of his work. So there are two things that I want to focus on um, as we're thinking of this and challenge our, challenging ourselves in, am I a fan? Am I a follower? Or even just, you know, as we reflect on our journey with Jesus and how we are today it can be something that maybe has shifted and changed, but we can really reassess that. And there are two things that I think we can think about together today as we discuss in the comments, as you go away and journal. And these are two distinctive things that I felt are um, big differences between being a fan and being a follower. And these are these things. To, um, number one, a follower listens to his voice. And number two, a follower leaves things behind. It's a sacrificial act. So um, followers listen to his voice. We know his voice. The disciples in the scripture we've just read, they would have heard him call their name and he actually said hey come and follow me and we don't know the ins and outs of did they argue did they kind of go what they it, the scriptures give us the impression that they were almost ready for that for that voice to come a, a voice that they knew was significant and they knew they could trust and follow when the call came and we listened to his voice a little while ago I was tagged in an Instagram reel and someone said, hey, hey, Leah, is this you doing the voiceover for this? So I listened to it and it was a Northern English accent, but it was clearly a Newcastle accent. And anybody who's listening today from Britain or from the North, from England, you know, there's a distinct difference between my Yorkshire accent and uh, an accent, a Geordie accent from Newcastle. And she had heard me speak at conferences. She had heard me on videos and things. And so she thought she knew my voice. But actually, there was, you know, there was still a lot of distance between us. She didn't really know me. So she couldn't distinguish what was my accent or what was my voice and what wasn't. It obviously wasn't my voice on, on the uh, voiceover. Um, but recognising someone's voice requires regular time together and a closeness of relationship. You know, our children know our voice, don't they? In a crowd, they can pick it out. 
And we all know that scripture, that beautiful scripture from John chapter 10. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Amazing. That's John 10, 27. So the, so the question here for us, the challenge for us here is, are we investing time and energy into getting to know him and his voice that requires time and intimacy and a lack of distraction you know if you if you're new here listen back to some of the older chapel sessions where we talk about this kind of stuff there be around fellow believers who sound like him read your bible linger in worship and quiet don't just listen to other preachers or celebrity christians or people who think they speak on behalf of Jesus and think, well, that's what he sounds like. No, he sounds like, you know, the voice that you hear when you're in worship and you're in his presence. Um, so a follower listens to his voice. That's really important here. And secondly, I just want to, so the second thing I want to leave you with and want us to linger on, which is really hard, but followers leave stuff behind. The disciples in this story left away. They left their profession. They left their culture almost. They left what they knew and they left their families. They left things of importance behind. There is a sacrifice in following Jesus. There isn't really a sacrifice to being a fan of something, is there? You know, we can admire a pop group, a, a band. We can admire an, admire an author, a, a speaker. And we can uh, do our life and be all those things that we are and we can still be a fan. Um, it doesn't really stop us or change us or affect who we are. But being a follower, which we already have said, that it causes movement. We know it actually drives us forward. And to be able to move freely and to flow... We have to let go of things. We can't be carrying our baggage and our stuff. Now, I'm not saying everybody should pack up their jobs and they abandon their families to follow Jesus, but we know it is a sacrifice. Jesus does, doesn't call us despite of who we are. He calls us as we are, just as we are. You don't have to be of certain status or situation in life to get an invitation. He calls our name now. Every day he says, come, come and follow me. Whenever we hear Jesus say, follow me, it is always, it is always required to leave something behind. And like I've said, it may not be like your job or your town or your family or a relationship. Sometimes it is, but it may be the habits that we've got into. It may be little things that we stopped doing or behaviours or attitudes. Like Leave them behind and follow Jesus. And as we know, when we follow Jesus, our prayer is that may all that follows flow from that intimacy with him, that rootedness in our relationship with Jesus. Again, just more and more scriptures remind us of the importance of this in Luke 9, if anyone wants to come with me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. So we know there is a big difference between a fan and a follower. And to truly be a follower of Jesus, some of the signs of that, we know we are moving forward and growing on that path of the righteous where each step is revealed to us and gets brighter and brighter. We know when we are followers of Jesus, we are li listening to his voice. We are growing in our intimacy and, uh, with him and we are actually investing in that relationship. Therefore, we recognise his voice and the scriptures say, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And then we know that followers have to leave stuff behind. And I guess one of the questions for us today and one of the things that we can journal and write about is Jesus. What do you want me to leave behind today? What do you want me to let go of? What am I still clutching and holding that is stopping me from fully following you? Are you a fan or are you a follower? Or maybe you're just recognising there are days when you can be one of each. <laughs> you can change from one to the other. But I'm sure like me, we truly and authentically want to be 
followers of Christ, followers of Jesus, are uh, all in all. In him we live and move and have our being. Well, let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think the difference is between a fan and a follower? And what are some of the challenges in that for you today? Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time, hello and welcome. Please do subscribe and click on that little thumbs up and the alarm bell, which will help you know when I go live and when the new sessions go up. I just want to pray over everybody who's watching today that you would know the peace of God guarding your heart and guarding your mind. Remember, he is the Prince of Peace. So whatever you're facing today, when you keep your eyes on him, his peace will mark your life and all that you're walking right now. I pray that in whatever stage uh, of motherhood you are at, whatever you're facing today, whatever you're doing, that you would have the wisdom to fulfil and do all that God has called you to do and the strength and capacity to walk that out in his wisdom, in his joy, in his peace. I pray that you would have hope for the day and hope for this week. And I just want to pray his blessing over you and your families and your homes, your businesses, your homeschools and all that you put your hand to today and the week ahead. It's been a pleasure spending a bit of time on Monday morning with you again and I will see you back here next week.